G'day, I'm John and I'm Anthony's dad. This is my first report for the Hot End YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about the build process of the Folgatech FT5 kit printer. Okay, welcome back. Uh, as I said, this is my first attempt at this sort of thing in front of camera, so uh, please be gentle with me. John Folger uh, brought out a new printer about uh, four or five months ago called the FT5, which I have here in front of me. He was uh, generous enough to supply the Hot End channel with two of these printers, uh, one for myself and one for Anthony. The one for myself was the full kit version. It's a ground up uh, nuts and bolts start from nothing kit. Um, Anthony's, uh, the one that he has, uh, was partially assembled. He'll be doing the, uh, the review of the machine as far as being a, uh, a printer and what it can do. My part of this is purely and simply on the, the kit itself um, and the parts and the build process to put the thing together. There are a number of uh, places that you can get help for building this printer. Uh, there's the Folgatec sites which have the official manual. Uh, I believe the manual is up to version six. Uh, it's been an ongoing going process to get that manual uh, to the point that it's at now. There are still some minor changes that uh, are to happen with the manual. There was a few little errors in it. Uh, nothing major, nothing that I found anyway. So um, I was actually speaking to John Folger last night uh, and we spoke about some of the, uh, the little glitches uh, that have happened with people that have been trying to build this machine. Everything is in hand, he uh, now knows where the, the problems are and uh, he'll be doing either a version 7 or a, uh, a supplement to go with the version 6 manual that tells you how to put this piece together. Now it's, um, it's a different sort of printer that I'm used to using. I'm used to the old um, RepRap type printer where the, the, the bed itself rattles backwards and forwards and uh, carries on. They work fine, I've got some beautiful prints off them. I've got two or three of those. This printer is, is different in that it, uh, the bed stays uh, still on the X and Y axis. Uh, and goes up and down on the Z axis. The uh, X and Y axis uh, run on rails uh, and they glide over the top of the, of the print bed making for a nice stable bed for your print to be stuck to. It's not wobbling about all over the place. Now as I said the kit arrives in a box in thousands of pieces. Uh, I found the easiest way to go about it was to sort all the pieces out first you'll find a multitude of nuts and bolts, mainly uh, M3s, M4s and M5s. And for those in America that aren't up with the metric system yet, that's four millimeter, three millimeter and five millimeter diameter bolts with the corresponding nuts, T-nuts and nylock nuts. Most of the rest of the printer is actually made up of uh, laser cut melamine parts, these black pieces that you can see here. I was dubious about the, the melamine parts, I didn't know whether they would be strong enough, um, but I can tell you that having put the thing together, um, I, I'd be happy to, to sit on this printer and, uh, and not have any problems. It's, it's strong, it's sturdy and it's stable with the, all these brackets that it's got. As you can see there's multiple nuts and bolts holding it all together so it's a, it's really solid. The X and Y as I said run on uh, rails. One thing that I will say um, now I didn't do a full unboxing of this thing because I find unboxings uh, boring to look at so I didn't do that but there is one thing that you have to be really careful of when you are unpacking this kit. The rails that the X and Y run on uh, have a, a carriage which has tiny ball bearings in it. Now if you're uh, not careful when you're unwrapping these rails and the carriage slides off the end, you'll have a hell of a time trying to find all the little bearings and trying to get it all put back together. 
So I find that the, the best thing to do is when you're unpacking it, as soon as you have those um, beams out of their packaging, the rails I should say, tape those carriages onto the rail so that they can't move. Uh, then you don't have to worry about them sliding off the end. I put mine together over a period of about five days, on and off. Uh, I'm retired, so I can do those sort of things. Um, I didn't time myself how long it took, but I'm guessing probably around 20, 24 hours build time, including the wiring. Um, as I said, I have built printers before, so I do have a bit of an idea of what I'm doing. But the disadvantage that I have is being over 60 years old, I don't have the, the flexibility in the fingers anymore. Where are you going, kids? Hey, I just want to talk to you. Why don't you come over to my place for a glass of wine and a couple of fruit pies, and then we can go in the back room and play crazy snakes. Hee! So playing around with little M3 nuts and bolts and peanuts uh, is quite difficult for me. So there are a couple of tools that I would recommend that you get, and that would be a very fine uh, needle nose pliers. Uh, and some tweezers and if you've ever heard of it it's a thing called an artery clamp. An artery clamp is very handy for doing the belts. Now I'll explain all of that um, in the part two of, of this series. I sorted out all the parts. The melamine parts were a bit dirty because of the laser uh, cutting process so I had to wipe all of those down to get all the, the black off the, off the parts. Uh, laid everything out uh, and commence the build. So I did a, uh, a full time lapse of the build process. Um, it won't actually show you a lot because uh, it's quite fast and the, you won't see a lot of detail. It's more for, um, for interest more than anything. So I do recommend that, that you watch it though because um, it was a bit of fun to do. It's a bit funny to watch seeing me Walk, walking all over the place because so I found the easiest way to build this was on the on the floor or on a low table so that you could actually walk around the thing uh, rather than trying to move it because it's quite heavy. Um, what next? The wiring, there were problems uh, originally with the wiring uh, and John Folger um, recognises that. He's only just this morning I noticed he's actually came up with why people were having a problem with the wiring for the hot end being too short to reach the um, the control board down in the bottom here uh, and it was purely and simply the most simple of, of solutions in that there were too many links in the cable chains which made the cable too short uh, now we've been fiddling with this as I say for a few months and we've only just discovered that that's what the problem was, nice and simple. So the manual will be updated as I said shortly with those sort of changes in it. There's a couple of references where it asks you to use a, uh, a certain length M3 where it doesn't actually provide that length of M3 in the kit so you use your common sense and just go to the next size. There's, there's a multitude of, of stuff left over when you finish, so there's, there's plenty of nuts and bolts to go around. So that wasn't a big issue. Um, as I said, it can be a little fiddly in places, um, but that was just harder for me. Okay, I, uh, as I said, finished my build over a five day period. I finished it actually last night. It is currently printing. I'm doing this piece in the Hot End Studio, which is, I must say, a very salubrious setup that Anthony's got here in his studio. Uh, the time lapse that I did on the build, I actually did in my office. And the part three of this three-part series where I do a sum up is, uh, will also be done in my office. So the quality won't be quite as good as what Anthony can produce here. But nonetheless, I'll give it a try, see what we can come up with. I'm a bit scared about the green screen behind me here because Anthony will be doing all the editing and post-production. So goodness knows what's going to be going on behind me while I'm doing this. Uh, and he's sitting over there now laughing at me, so who knows? Anyway, that's it from me for my first attempt. As I say, this is part one. Please watch part two, which is the uh, time lapse of the build 
And then in part three, I'll give you my opinion of how the build process went. And by then, Anthony will have his videos up of the review of the actual performance of the machine. Thanks for watching.